Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Carolyn. Hi. It's a very nice morning, and uh, I was thinking, let's uh, start with a fairy tale. Once upon a time, in a galaxy, oh, not so far away, actually, right here, there was a small, cute startup called TransferWise. And what happened ever after? The startup uh, grew up, uh, changed the name to WISE, and yesterday received the award for the most valuable Estonian technology company in 2023. <laughs> and uh, as I really like uh, fairy tales, before we will go to the main topic of uh, uh, today's morning discussion, I would uh, like to go back to Wise's uh, fairy tale roots. Startup life is all about pitching, doing the startup pitches. So, for uh, those of us who don't know Wise or remember TransferWise and are not sure what is Wise up to these days, could you do please a startup pitch about Wise? Of course. I feel like Wise has grown so much since its founding in 2011. Uh, so WISE really is a global technology platform that's making the money move around the world. We make cross-currency transfers very easy, very transparent, and very accessible in our platform. We have three products now, which is really amazing. We have the WISE account, which is a personal, WISE business, which is for business owners, and then WISE platform for banking. It's incredible how it's grown in the last couple of years. Uh, we rebranded this year, so we went from blue to green. And honestly, from now on, it's just upwards, and there's so many great opportunities and activities happening. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, energetic start. So those of you who are intending to invest, then uh, you can ask some uh, startup pitch uh, questions later on. However, I would uh, like to start approaching the human side of your activities. Of course. You mentioned uh, quite some uh, client groups. And uh, could you describe uh, some of those groups who are benefiting from uh, WISE services to give kind of a human face to those groups? Who are those people? So what's really cool about WISE is because we have about 40 currencies around the world, we work a lot in remittances, and that is a cornerstone of our product. And that sort of drives financial inclusion in a lot of vulnerable communities. So a core part is really working with those communities, really working on our product delivery to work on remittances and drive cheaper and faster currency rates across our platform and really making, bringing the money into the hand of the people. And uh, could you bring uh, some examples? Uh, what may be the use cases of needing WISE's services? Who are the people who are choosing uh, to uh, become the clients of your company? So apart from world travelers such as myself, I use WISE when I travel all around the place because you just have so many currencies available. Um, it's also families, also people, for example, who travel abroad and go and work in a country like Europe, a country like Europe, a continent like Europe, a country like the UK, and want to send money back home say they're from the Philippines, say they're from Malaysia, they will use WISE, they can have, do that through a WISE account, through their personal multi-currency account, to send money back to their family and build that. That is really the cornerstone of this remittance work we're doing. Um, so honestly, it's very cool. It's part of our UN SDG. Uh, currently, the UN says that remittance and cross-border payments need to be about 3%. That needs to be the cost of it. We've brought it down to 0.65%, making these, uh, these costs cheaper, transparent, and you know exactly what you're going to get when you send the money to back to your family. And uh, as our uh, today's morning uh, session is and uh, will be about community impact, so uh, based on uh, what you have just introduced us, could you sum up uh, so what are the main uh, positive impacts of the services of WISE? What would be missing from the world if WISE would not exist? impact-wise? Oh, I love that question. So a really interesting fact about WISE is before 
it started to hold multiple currencies into, a, an, into an account. Say you wanted to open an HSBC account. You actually had to, be, actually had to have about 60,000 pounds to be in that account to be able to move in a bunch of currencies. We open that accessibly. We make that for everyone, which really just means that you don't need to have 60,000 pounds, which is an absurd amount of money, in your account to be able to transfer money across the world. So that accessibility, that fastness, most transfers arrive incredibly fast, uh, opens up really you to have the money right there. So that really is the cornerstone also of driving that remittance works, bringing in financial inclusion. For example, a lot of countries' economies, such as like Mexico and the Philippines, a lot of their GDP is based on remittance work. Imagine having that money instantly. You're working in Mexico, for, uh, you're working in the US, for example, and you want to send money back to Mexico, it arrives there instantly with a WISE account. And uh, those of us uh, who are uh, working with the environmental impact of the co corporations are already getting a bit scratchy, because when uh, talking about the environmental impacts of corporations, then in uh, many cases, uh, the biggest impact uh, can not come uh, not from the uh, positive impact of the corporation. However, actually looking uh, at what risks and negative impacts already exist, and then how we can mitigate these. So I would uh, like to ask from you as well, you gave a very good overview of the positive impacts of the core services. What can be the risks or negative impacts of those core services of uh, WISE to the communities? And what are you doing regarding this? Of course. So that's a very good question, because I think we do monitor a lot of climate and sustainable risks. But looking at social impact risks, it's kind of nebulous. Like, how do you really think about this? At WISE, we really look at our risk and we look at, say, pricing. Um, say, macroeconomic circumstances, like inflation, things that we can't control, that would be a very large risk that we would have to mitigate. And we do that by advancing sort of payment infrastructure and direct access into a lot of our accounts, into a lot of our product, which will be able to keep these costs low to provide that valuable remittance works. Another big core thing is, say, financial crime. We have a robust framework as WISE to mitigate and counter the costs that are like financial crime and money laundering. Thank you very much. So when uh, listening to those uh, keywords, then I started to think that uh, WISE is uh, probably quite uh, busy, like uh, having all the hands uh, at the work uh, regarding the positive impact so that your service could create value for the customers and then uh, mitigating all those ne negative impacts and uh, risks which can be out there if we are not working with this. And uh, all of us uh, who have come to listen to this uh, session are interested in uh, community impact of the corporations beyond the core uh, services. And so let's start with this why question. As your hands at WISE are already quite full with the core services, why uh, have you decided to look beyond what other community impact you can have? Why? I think the role of global companies nowadays is to have more impact beyond, say, their product. They are accountable to the planet and its people. And when looking at that framework, beyond, say, our core product work we do with remittances, we also need to look at the effects we have within our community. How do we, a global company, WISE, with a lot of offices around the world, from here, Tallinn to Singapore, how do we really acknowledge our community, build our community, and also respect within this community? So with that sort of mindset, which was started quite early on, specifically in Tallinn, with sort of uh, scholarships, next generation work, empowering the youth, we wanted to grow that. And we created programs internally, leveraging our volunteer day that we offer to all employees to use that volunteer day to provide um, help to an organization that's close to their heart. So it was a sort of two factor element that was looking at our youth, our next generation, developing that tech talent internally, externally, sorry, in our home base, but also looking at the community we could have with the most vulnerable, with the people that we see would really benefit from a lot of remittance work, a lot of community engagement, which is migrants, which is also refugees. So when looking at it from a very holistic point of view, this is the sort of impact we were looking to develop within a community lens, both externally and internally using our volunteering day. Mm -hmm. 
uh, one word uh, that we used uh, in the title of this uh, session was distraction and uh, connected uh, with this why question. If you could uh, think about this uh, journey, what uh, choices uh, have wise made so far to uh, make decisions about community involvement while avoiding becoming distracted because there seem to be countless opportunities how to uh, contribute to the community, then how to avoid being distracted? What the choices uh, have been? I mean, you can do so the beauty of social impact is that you can do so much, but it's really about honing in the possibilities and also staying true to your core. So that's why refugees and migrants, we segmented that. Those are the people we really wanted to impact because they benefit from our product, but also they're the most vulnerable. They could do, they deserve the impact. So now looking at that, sort of looking at our audience, our strategy, we also looked at how we can internalize that and gain opportunities from our wisers. So what we developed is a new program, which is called the Wisers Giving Back Program, where we partnered with organizations in our main offices, uh, Singapore, Tallinn, Budapest, London, and our US offices, Austin, New York, and Tampa. And we partnered with organizations there that focus on refugee integration and migrant integration. And with that partnership, we develop a volunteering program for our uh, employees, our wisers, to go and volunteer with this organization, but at the same time work on workshops that focus on financial literacy, focus on remittance work, and bringing that all together, that little pretty package that is the combination of both the volunteering and the impact is really core part of our mission. So it's never a distraction. It's just about developing, iterating, and driving that change and driving that impact by also receiving the feedback and having that cycle continue. Mm -hmm. As uh, many of those uh, target groups are or uh, could be also the clients of WISE, how do you draw the line that uh, these expats or the people who have moved to other country for various reasons, these are our paying clients and these are the more vulnerable groups we are helping at the moment. Uh, how do you make those choices? How do you define those target groups? I never approach this as like potential clients. It's never a sales pitch. That seems very disingenuous. And I feel like I would not be honest to myself and honest to the company values if I was approaching uh, organizations with the end goal of this being a sales pitch. So it's really about looking at the social impact and seeing also how our community, our internal community, our employees view this as very, very responsible and sorry, very viable and a way of developing that. What's really core in all of this is that I went to our many offices who know a lot about, say, the social fabric of their environment, and I asked our employees there, what, could, what organization would you guys like to partner with? What do you guys feel like is the closest to their heart? And then they came back, they came back with feedback. For example, in Singapore, we partner with an organization called It's Raining Raincoats that works on migrant, uh, migrant integration within Singapore. And that organization I would have never found by myself. But I went to our employees and I was like, hey, we have an opportunity to really create impact. What organization would you like to create impact in? And they came up with this one because they saw that this organization did a lot of work for it during COVID. And when I developed the partnership, when we did volunteering opportunities for them, there was a lot of enthusiasm towards it. So it's never approached in a way of like, these could be our potential clients. It's always viewed as, we can use this opportunity for volunteerism, giving back to our community, and then create long-term sustainable change by building onto these partnerships. As uh, you have just uh, kicked off this uh, Wiser's uh, Giving Back program ambitiously, uh, what are some of the examples that uh, you hope that will emerge, like uh, practically, how will Wiser's give back? Well, what would be some of the examples that, that they will be doing? Oh, okay. So this is all developing right now. So I'm really excited to talk about this because it's really important to have um, organized, uh, activities in place. Otherwise, it's a lot of talk, no action. You need to have activities in place. So I'll give you a very concrete mm -hmm. example. Yesterday, we partnered, I went to the refugee council here, Esti Bagulasavi. Excuse my pronunciation. I do not speak Estonian. However, with them, we partnered with them early on this year. I really wanted to meet them in person. We'd been talking about building literacy, financial literacy workshops and doing one-on-one -on -one volunteering. 
that is a language save based volunteering. The beauty of WISE is that we have a diverse set of employees, from Ukrainians to Russians to Latinos, a massive set of people who want to really help, who speak a language of, say, a refugee. Why don't you just pair them up and have like a conversation? more than willing to happen. And those were the sort of organization, the sort of activities we were sort of brainstorming yesterday. And another thing we really are trying to build on, we will build on, is also providing, say, yes, financial literacy workshops. Not, we could use the WISE product, but it's really about when people arrive here, they may not have a bank account. What does that look like in context? Say they get a job, where do you put the paycheck? Sort of building on that sort of knowledge, using the organization's feedback, because they know their community their best, to integrate that within our workshops. Uh, back to the risks, uh, question. One uh, alarm bell which uh, started ringing in my head was that, aha, uh, especially refugees, also other types of uh, migrants, uh, can be among the most vulnerable uh, people in our uh, countries and their main needs may be psychological, although they need all this uh, practical advice also immediately to avoid uh, making any financial mistakes, for example. Uh, what uh, risks WISE uh, have seen and uh, how do you mitigate this that uh, when volunteers are working with refugees, for example, that uh, the vulnerable people would get, let's say, the advice in the way that really supports them and, for example, uh, doesn't make them less anxious? So, I'm not a mental health professional, and we aren't a mental health mm. professional company, but it's really interesting you, brought that, you bring that up because in the brainstorming we were having yesterday with the Refugee Council, um, that was brought up, and they say they have a very dedicated mental health professional mm. sort of department that they work with the refugees there. So I really sort of rely on the experts mm -hmm. to work on the mental health area. And if they want support from us, more than happy to provide it. But a whole part of this, my whole philosophy towards impact is impact is grassroots community led. You go to the experts of the environment. I am not an expert in Estonian refugees or Singaporean migrants, but I know people who are. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to rely on that expertise to build up the strategy. And building off that, it's sort of integrating that sort of high-level impact theory, philosophy into all of our, our activities and building that reliance and that partnership with our organization. Uh, for me, it's a very inspiring uh, example that you have uh, chosen to work with uh, grassroots level NGOs without uh, trying to build up, let's say, WISE's refugee department or WISE's mental health department. And you are very working with the people who have this uh, long-term experience. However, um, in my previous uh, life, uh, I was uh, working in uh, Kutit Foundation, Headeo Sihtasutus, in Estonian language, uh, in a similar role, like being intermediary uh, between the volunteers from corporate sector and then the NGOs working with uh, vulnerable individuals. And one core challenge that I remember from the work was, uh, let's say, expectations management. And uh, I mean uh, both the expectations of uh, corporate volunteers and also expectations of NGOs. Because usually the corporate uh, volunteers are expecting that they can do something very quickly and it will have very high impact and it will be fun it will be a change from their, uh, let's say, everyday activities. And first, I would uh, like to ask, uh, how will you handle the expectations of the wise employees who may be a bit tired, exhausted, and they want to get some inspirational kick out of this volunteering experience, and then they see, like, wow, it's very important. However, those people are in a very complicated situation, they would need longer-term help. There is uh, now so many existential ideas to think about. So what, what about the preparation and, let's say, uh, mental awareness of the employees? Um, so I, I know this is a cliche. I don't like cliches, but I'm going to say one. Yeah. It's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I used to also work with NGOs, and I also understand from their side how complicated it can be. 
So I use that, well, I use that knowledge to be very patient about it, to be very patient that these things take time, because building sustainable impact takes time. And with that knowledge, with that know-how, I have a lot of patience. We do a lot of touching calls, uh, like touch point calls with the organization. But more importantly, I have a structure. Mm -hmm. So we, initi we initially do the partnership. We have a discussion. It's all about socializing. After that, after we socialize the idea and the partnership internally, I organize a sort of a meet and greet, a sort of intro with the organization, with the company. So people are aware of it. People know it exists within the office. I really approach this on a very regional basis. For example, the London office may not need to know what's happening in Singapore, but the Singaporeans are very obviously keen to work with an organization that's close to their heart. So using that sort of regional approach, using that very like sort of focused, streamlined approach, I try and build that momentum. After, for example, having an organization, having that meet and greet, having that sort of initial touch point, I then have activities in place, sort of one-to-one -one peerage, and that I've organized over months with the NGO. It's not, it can't be something that's going to happen like, oh, we start this, and then we do this, we do this, we do this. No. I also realized, for example, that our employees might have, you know, conflicts. It's also working around that and making sure that they can use their, their, their volunteer day. Some people just don't even realize they have a volunteer day. So it's about raising awareness on that end. So it's a mixture of both like basic project management, socializing the idea and building that momentum and also communicating that if you miss this volunteering event, don't worry, there will be another. Also listening and driving that feedback from both ends because combining all of that together makes it so that it is sustainable. There is impact mm -hmm. over the long term as opposed to just being like, okay, here we are, we've partnered, here's the event, ciao, ciao. That's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. That doesn't lead to much impact either. Mm -hmm. It's building that over years. Mm -hmm. To me, it uh, sounds uh, very uh, promising uh, combining those good intentions with a very firm structure as well. And uh, I remember that uh, WISE's uh, volunteering uh, program is older than this uh, new in initiative uh, called WISERS uh, Giving Back. Uh, perhaps you could also reflect uh, about uh, what were the experiences of this uh, previous volunteering programs and uh, how have you used those experiences now building up this, uh, let's say, updated uh, structure, how to contribute to the community? Yeah, yeah, of course. Prior to uh, this like, very structured volunteering program we, I cr we created internally, um, there were also other volunteering opportunities. People were able to use their volunteering day to any organization. That is obviously also still an option. They engage with their lead. They're like, I want to go and volunteer there. They get the lead support, and then they can go and volunteer. But prior to the volunteerism, we did a lot of work in sort of uh, youth development, youth empowerment. So we run sort of three sort of pillars when it comes to this. The first is Wise Women Code. We encourage women and non-binary people to come and apply for a Wise Women Code three-day immersive program in London, Thailand, and Singapore to learn what it's like to work in a tech company because there's still massive barriers for women and for non-binary to be integrative within the Wise Women Code, uh, coding, sorry. Then we have also a scholarship. So we run a scholarship program. Uh, it's actually just opened for Taltech and Tartu. Tartu, I think, is closing. Taltech just opened, where you're able to apply and WISE will give you a scholarship. And then there's also the WISE Entrepreneurship School, because what we really want to work with that is understand and give people the opportunity to know how it is to create a product. At the end of the day, WISE is a product. Tech is a product. How do you build a product? And giving that sort of creativity, that opportunity to use to understand how you do that is exactly what the WISE Entrepreneurship School is all about. That's really focused in Estonia. Uh, from Tallinn to really every corner of the country to sort of take in both diversity and socioeconomic barriers to bring this to everyone. Mm -hmm. So that was also a large part of our impact, development, education, and youth. And then we have the more refugee volunteerism aspect. And that's just starting. There's a bunch of other stuff in the pipeline, which <laughs> I'm very excited about. Yeah, and uh, what uh, corporations are always uh, happy about if they have a, a clear uh, strategy, Yeah. Uh, what are the fields that we are uh, contributing to? And you have just uh, outlined these very uh, clearly uh, regarding the, let's say, next uh, generation of uh, technology leaders and employees, and also 
migrants and uh, refugees. However, the employees can have, let's say, different uh, preferences. Uh, what are your strategies uh, regarding the employee engagement in case the strategy comes from above and then uh, I have to decide whether to start getting enthusiastic about it, whether should I contribute as a volunteer or not? Uh, how do you engage the employees into these uh, programs? So I like, I'm, I'm very active on Slack. Like, I would say I'm very annoying on Slack. Hmm. So I try and drive momentum there. I also ask specific communities for feedback. I think, I think that's very key when driving momentum. If you go to people directly and you're like, say like on a conversation, even on a base, you're like, hey, how are you doing? Like, can we talk about what you think impact is? And then we can start having that engagement. That's very contagious. So you sort of work with the officers, work with the wisest there, on what they see themselves as doing something impactful. Because like I inherently believe everyone wants to make impact. It's about figuring out what that impact means to that person. So having on that one-to-one -one personal basis with each sort of teams, team leads, employees, and the beautiful thing about WISE is that we have access to everyone. Everyone can talk to anyone. So just going directly and being like, hey, I see you're really engaged in this. Let's talk about it. Let's build this together. And that sort of drives the momentum. I was recently in Singapore to launch it, and that's exactly what happened. I posted something in the internal channels in Slack, and I was like, hey guys, I'm here, let's talk. And then eventually, people started talking to each other. They were like, hey, let's use our volunteering day for this organization. And then we had over like 25 people right there volunteering, and it was a great activity. It was a great afternoon out, and we always felt like we did great things. Well, we did, it was great. <laughs> and after that, it's about feedback. You do an event, exactly like here, you do get feedback, you compile it to make sure that in the future we get to build on that. Yes, and I started to think that the impact field is always about the striking delicate balance. On the one hand, it's this enthusiasm and inspiration, which you just nicely described, and how this, let's say, community of employees can also be, let's say, starting to generate this enthusiasm themselves and uh, keeping the engagement sustainable. On the other hand, there is always the tricky question of measurement. So what? All the enthusiasm, all the activities, so what? Uh, how are you uh, tackling or planning to tackle this so what question? What is going to change? I feel like impact measurement is a question we're all trying to figure out in the impact space. I have a lot of conversations with all of organizations and at the end I'm like, so how, do we, how are we going to measure this? And they're like, we're also trying to figure that out. That is, whereas sustainability has very clear ways to measure carbon footprint, measure the carbon. Uh, sustainability is like, how do you measure impact? Is it integration of someone in a community? What does that mean? Or is it if a person gets a job, that sort of financial inclusion, that could be a measurement. But how do we do a time? How do we benchmark? All of these conversations, I feel like they're in development. And I think in a couple of years, we'll have a much more clear idea of what that means. However, right now, I understand that that is a very hard, nebulous question. So I go back to the partnership. I go back to the organization. And I'm like, hey, let's both agree that this can be quite a complicated question. We both might have different sort of incentives. Let's talk about it. Let's use your resources to understand how you measure impact. It could be surveys, it could be one-on-one -on -one conversations. And with that, let's try and understand what I want to see as impact. Is it, say, someone who does have a job at the end? And so it's sort of building that, developing that, using frameworks. There's a lot of frameworks out there. Bring them together to see what contextually works for the best thing. Because I feel like with impact, there's no one solution fits all. It's not, I, like, it's not as simple as that because impact is so nuanced, it's so personal, and it's so community-based. And it's understanding that and working with the people who know the community the best to build the impact. And realize that, once again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. This could be a year project that happens. And also, it's a thing that you build with the more feedback. The more sort of food you put into the machine, the more output you'll get. So we're working on it. I'm very excited to do this and sort of build this together with our partner organizations. 
And uh, how do you feel at the moment? Uh, what will your approach uh, regarding uh, impact uh, measurement will be? Will it more like be financial management that you do internally in the corporation? Will it be more like auditing, like a service that you will uh, buy from an external service provider or kind of combination? What's your uh, feeling Definitely at the moment? Definitely not audits currently mainly because that I think is premature. The auditing frameworks aren't really out there because I think they also don't know, we're all in the same like, same place. We don't know how to measure impact. So I think right now it will be a mix of internal, external. We track volunteering days. That's probably the simplest way of doing it. But in terms of say the impact, uh, the externalized impact that we are looking we will probably rely a lot on the organization to understand what they see as externalized impact and build off that platform and see how we can integrate it with ours. Because it's not a sales pitch. We don't, like, it's not like, please use WISE. No, this is about delivering impact. And if, for example, we define the parameter to be someone getting a job and being financially inclusive, then that is sort of an impact. We, that's sort of a measurement we will aim for. Thank you very much for explaining. Well, uh... As I've uh, been uh, focusing on uh, Carolyn, uh, one risk that I didn't uh, mitigate was checking on the questions from the audience. So uh, one question that I could see uh, was, how do you start building an impact strategy for a corporation? But perhaps you could uh, try outlining it very uh, practically, like uh, where to start from? What are the first steps? Okay, so that's a great question because you need practicality, you need a bit of project management to do this. So firstly, you engage stakeholders. What does that mean? You engage the people that are going to be involved in the process, whether it's, say, the workplace team in, a, in, a, in an office that will sort of help you do the logistics of it, or is it like the people team who will help spread the word? Engaging those stakeholders is very important. You can do that through a meeting, through a conversation. After that, it's actually working with the partnership. You work with that actually incongruously. You work at it parallel. And that is about sort of managing the expectations, building the volunteering activities, communicating that out to your stakeholders. After that, comms. You do a lot of communications internally. You work with the organization on any external communication. You set a date. With that date, you bring in the partner beforehand. That's all like socialization and comms. And then finally is the kickoff. There, it's, you work with whatever sort of arrangement you've worked with the organization, and then you kick it off, and then you continue building that relationship. You continue building that partnership to make sure it is lived in, it is sustainable. So it's kind of like an event management slash stakeholder management, but it's pretty seamless at the end of the day if you do it properly, and also understand that you're not on a tight, tight schedule, so this can take its time to grow. People have busy lives, and just building it from there. Yeah, so if I understood uh, correctly, then uh, it's uh, kind of uh, trying to do any change management in the company. It's yeah. uh, planning and then uh, discussing, discussing, discussing. Uh, based on that question, as you also mentioned, uh, about uh, working with different departments, what do you see as a role of you, as the initiator and leader of the topic in the corporation, and uh, what will be the role of other departments regarding this uh, community engagement and creating community impact? Um, it's about getting the support. So, for example, you work a lot in buy-ins. So, say you want buy-in from the people team. The people team, you present it and they're just like, we love it. That means they love it. And that means they will also talk about it. So, it's working with that buy-in. After that, that's honestly such an important part and you can use different people different teams to build this out with you it takes a village to do this like i could never do this just by myself it's working with the people on the ground to build the strategy out to work with the logistics for example we needed to uh, rent a bus to get to the organization for singapore and there i had to work with the workplace team i don't know how to do that so it's working with them getting the buy-in internally that we want to do this and that's why when I started all of this, I asked the employees, the wisers, what organization we wanted to partner with. Because I didn't want to come in and be like, we're partnering with this. And they're like, we've never heard of it. That doesn't drive enthusiasm. That doesn't drive momentum. It's partnering with them. So when it does issue, when the event does happen, you can actually be like, it's finally happening, guys. Let's come together. Let's do this. And that makes it easier to build, to develop, 
when you have that inherent enthusiastic base? Well, uh, if you could uh, go uh, back to the beginning of establishing uh, WISE's uh, community engagement strategy and you could start all over again, what is one thing that you would do differently? I'd start earlier, but I can't, I don't have a time machine, so I can't do that. But I think I would definitely invest a bit more time into how we're going to measure impact, because that is definitely really important also in the long run to showcase what we do and also build and develop it and get that feedback. So if I had to go back, I would sort of restructure and understand what impact is and sort of reflect more on that. And that's what I'm doing currently. That's a large part of what I'm reflecting on right now. But I wish I did that earlier. And my last question will be three years from now, one uh, grassroots level impact story you hope that will have happened thanks to all those grand strategies we have just discussed? So I hope all the partnerships we have are now fully mature, fully developed, and we have an impact framework. But I really am looking also to developing nations, say Mexico and the Philippines, and working, those are large remittance-based areas, and working with an organization there. That's the next frontier, is externalizing it, working with organizations there, where we see the real impact of our product within the remittances. Thank you very much. And uh, the main uh, insight uh, that I received uh, from the conversation uh, was uh, when you described uh, how you work uh, internally in the corporation. So although we need to plan community engagement, uh, what uh, helps to make it sustainable and potentially impactful are the relationship inside the corporation. And then uh, you can also reach out and uh, avoid being distracted. Uh, thank you very much. Our uh, time is up. Perhaps uh, some questions from the stage uh, host that we missed from this screen. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, hey. Hi, <laughs> I'm back. I was wondering because what I can hear from like the social responsibility that companies are taking, we hear a lot about greenwashing, uh, but sort of uh, the social washing because um, there has been a, a research done in Lithuania that uh, companies mainly talk about their social responsibility and the outcome of the research was uh, maybe it's because it's easier to take social responsibility than um, you know environmental responsibility because then you have to you know, calculate your CO2 emissions offset it or reduce it in many ways and it becomes costly and difficult. So um, do you think that this is sort of a trend that's been happening, that companies talk more about their social responsibility because it's more easy, it's more comfortable sometimes? That's a great question. I think the reason why people struggle with social impact is because of the lack of measurement. So say with, yeah, sustainability, you're like, okay, this is your carbon footprint this is what you're doing to mitigate that carbon footprint. With social impact, it's like, here we are doing social impact and there's no accountability because there's no metrics, there's no measurements at the other end. And I think once we start formalizing those metrics, those measurements, then we will have the same sort of platform as say the carbon because then they'll be able to have accountability. Be like, oh, you know, that's connected to this impact here. We've seen you increase or decrease within that impact there. And that will provide like global accountability. And because this conversation about how to measure impact is ongoing, I like there's probably definitely social washing happening. But I think there's been a large push within, say, policy regulation to start measuring that impact. So I think that's going to change, and people will have to be remaining accountable. But there's also like beauty in having those metrics because then you can form a strategy. You can look at it in a very holistic way, like you do with sustainability. So that's the future I see that with measurement, with metrics, we become more accountable to our impact on the planet and its people. Honestly, I love that question because like part of our impact philosophy is systemic sort of impact. And the idea of systemic impact I find is very new. Like it's very like a, a refreshing way of viewing it. It's a 360 vision of looking at it and then looking at like, how social impact would be delivered, especially when you kind of bring in climate change and how that will deteriorate communities. So 
with that sort of vision, like I really try and embed that in the community. So say like one of my grand visions is communities that will be largely impacted by climate change will be the most vulnerable. Those people will probably move out of those communities and go and work somewhere else. So that's where like the remittance work goes into. But let's like take a step back and look at those communities within it and see what is happening with it, within it. Is it sort of like natural deterioration? Is it social deterioration? How can we sort of manage that? How can we sort of look into it introspectively and then create like sustainable, because systemic sort of su sustainable impact is long-term 360 idea. So that's how I'm trying to view it and trying to develop it and go into it with that lens.